In this video, I'm going to show you a really easy trick for making your YouTube videos much more user friendly. What's up everybody, Dave Curley with The Church Media Guys. And if you want to learn how to leverage media and technology so that you can take the gospel to the digital world, start now by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell so that you don't miss a thing. If we're putting our videos up on YouTube or if we're live streaming to YouTube, then one would think that our goal is to get people to actually watch our content that we're putting up there. Am I right? Now, a few ways to do that is to have a great piece of content, whatever it is, whether it's your sermon or a video or a story or whatever and they have a great thumbnail and a great title, then you increase the chances that people are going to click on that video. Now, once they're in that video, one of the things that a lot of people don't think about is helping them navigate through the video, especially if the video goes longer or if the video has different sections in it, like this one. This one has an introduction that I'm talking to you right now. It's then gonna have a tutorial that I'm gonna show you. Then it's gonna have another piece where I come back and talk to you. Then it's gonna have another tutorial. So if you look below in the description, you'll see that I've got timestamps there. And those timestamps allow you to go to a specific point in the video. And I wanna show you how to make those. Okay, let's take a look. This is a video that is a list of the four best church media design tools, and we want to make this a little more navigable. This this was one of our live shows, and you can see it's, you know, from, it's about 30 minutes, this show was. So what we want to do is find the points in here where we have our different apps that we're talking about and make timestamps for those. So the first thing you want to do is you want to navigate through to where things start. So I know like around the two minute mark, um, we start talking about one of them here. Let's look. Things that we want to share with y'all today. Um, Justin, why don't you kick it off with the, the first one? Okay, so here's where we start sure. talking about so my Canva, first, okay? Because he, he like pitches me uh, By the way, Dave, are you doing Canva? Is that one of your tools? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do have Canva. Go okay. ahead and do that. Yeah, all right. So, so let's just say 207 was our time because that's when we kind of set it off. What we want to do is we want to mark that time in here in the description here in YouTube. So we're in the YouTube studio. So let's start by putting our first time marker in here. And here's how you do it. This is really easy. Okay, you ready? Watch this. Two, zero, seven. Two colon, zero, seven. And then I like to put a couple of spaces just for cleanliness. Canva. Boom, that's it. That's all we got to do. Now there will be a time that shows up on there. So let's 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 do this um, chapter points. That's what I'm going to call this. These are our chapter points, like like in DVDs, right? I think we actually do a little walkthrough of Canva, like around five-ish minutes. So you can do that with Canva. In fact, Justin actually has Canva up on the screen here. Let me show it to you. There you are. Okay, so 528 is where he starts. So I'm just going to back it up a little bit, and we'll just say 525. That ought to give us a little bit of a lead in there. 525, Canva walkthrough. Okay, you see how this this is very easy. So I've marked down a few others. Let's see. This is really cool. So that's Canva. Okay, so 635 is where we'll start the next one. 635, Justin, oops. Talks about Design Bold. And then I have the others in there that I've already marked. And there you go. Now, what's cool is YouTube will automatically associate these time markers, anything with a colon in it, um, with the time index of the videos. So I'm going to hit save. We're taking another trip okay, so to Mount Rushmore video. today. It's the. Now, if I look down here, chapter points right there. So let's just go to. Two, see, they're they're clickable, so let's just go to two hundred seven. Sure. So my and first one, uh, by the way, Dave. And then let's go to five twenty-five. He has Canva up on the screen here. Let me show it to you. There you are. So these are all the projects that I've made in Canva. Let's go all the way to twenty-six twelve. Love to have you. My last. There you go. Now our video for the viewers is much more navigable. So when they go and click to look at the description, look at the links and stuff in the description, all of that information will be right there and they can just go right through it. So is this making sense to you? If it is, tell me how you're gonna use it. Leave a comment below. I wanna know how you're using the time indexes, the time stamps, uh, to make your videos more navigable. In fact, leave me a link if you can to your channel. I'd love to take a look at it. And if you are learning something here, you can always subscribe. Be sure to do that. 
Now, a lot of us are putting up sermon videos or Bible study videos, and these could be anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes to 40 minutes. They could even go longer. Now, a lot of pastors do have bullet points when they go through their sermon. You know how they learned, right? The, the formula, you know, a joke, illustration, three points and a prayer. So one of the things that we can do is we can use these timestamps to actually go from point to point to point. So let me show you how we can use these timestamps to actually make a long sermon video a lot more easier to watch. Okay, now let's take a look at what we can do with a sermon. I've already done this one. This was our sermon from last week. Doing sermon notes uh, in the description, depending on what the pastor gives me, will depend on how much information I have to do it's in here. Now, this one, we actually went through and had several different steps um, in our thing. One of the things that I, I noticed was if I put in a time, if, if I put, let's, let's do this. Let's just do Matthew 15, excuse me, Matthew 18, 15 through 20. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, that's a scripture reference. That's what you and I always do. Um, Here's the problem. This is going to show up as a time stamp, and I'll show you what happens here. Because we put that colon there, so let's go take a look at it. Jesus is very concerned not with reconciliation. And let's scroll down. See, right there, you can tell, right there in our in our description, at the very top. See, it thinks we're talking about 1815, so Wait if we go there, because, see, it, listen, it goes to that, that Jesus point. Is so what I've done is... I actually leave those as uh, just something a little visually different. So Matthew chapter 18, and then in brackets I put verses 15 through 20. It's not, it, it doesn't end up being clickable, but it still will inform the person of what it is that we need. And, you know, we could actually, if you wanted, you could actually go ahead and, and in here you could put a link to, say, Bible Gateway for that scripture if you wanted to. Um, the problem is, is that it will bring it up inside this uh, inside this browser window. Wouldn't pop it into a new tab, um, so that would take them away from the video. So you may not want to do that. Okay, so then down here we have the segment on biblical reconciliation, which is the actual like four points that he made during the sermon. He had a slide for each one of these. So what I did was I went in and found about the point that he turns the corner from one one thing he's talking about to the next. And if you're making notes during the recording of this, you know, when this happens, just take a look at your recording and look at the time index. When that happens, you'll, you'll have sort of a rough approximation about where you need to go. Um, if you're putting the slides up, then it's always easy to just <laughs> scroll through till you get to the visual of the slide. And when you get to the visual of the slide, then you can, you, you'll know, boom, right about there is where I need to start looking. So, you know, I'll back it up just a little bit and just kind of listen to what he's saying and get a good lead in. But let's, let's save that real quick and go back and Double check it. Let me refresh. Back in your car. And I'll scroll down, show more. Here they all are. These aren't clickable, which is good. And so let's just go to the main point. There's that. I'm talking about something that was found and is acting lost. And then I'm also talking about something that is lost and not yet found. Man, let's go down to step four. The fourth and final step of this text is this. We see it there at the final part of verse 17. If he doesn't pay attention... Now, as you saw, one of the things that we need to do when we're putting scripture references in our descriptions is to be careful how we put that because those scripture references can show up as time indexes. And if they were to click on one, it would take them to whatever that is, <laughs> you know, John 15, 25. So it would take them to 15 minutes and 25 seconds into the video. So be sure that you format those just a little bit different. It'll make it still readable for them, but it'll also help them not go to the place that they don't want to go to in the video. Did I say that backwards? And if you're like me, you're always looking for new ways to make your content better. And this is just one of the ways that you can do it. In fact, I've got a video right over here that shows you how to start making your live streams even more better. Is that the right word to use? More better? How to make your live streams more better. Anyway, click on that. Please don't tell the grammar police what I said. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.